What's going on everyone? This is Michael here at 3D Print Everything and today we have a Sobel 3D in for repair. Uh, this looks like a 350-ish bed. I don't even know the exact model number. If I can find it, it might be in the heading. Let me start off with, I have not fixed this particular printer yet before. Not this one or a model uh, in the same shape. Well, this will kind of be a review slash figuring it out together type of thing. Um, so this might be a longer video because you're actually going to see kind of how I start uh, repairing something like this or thinking about how it should be repaired, what I'm going to check for. So hopefully more than just an instructional video on like this is how you level your x-axis, which is what the presenting problem is. This printer is otherwise um, in working order. I was just told that the bed and the x-axis are not level. Now I can see, I don't know if you can, that the x-axis is out of level. Let's let this pass. Okay. Or not the x-axis, the bed is unlevel. It definitely looks like it was, is tighter down here than it is over here. Um, now with one of these, the issue is going to come, and this will help when it comes to deciding if you want a printer or not. Me, personally, I dislike the BL Touch. I literally had another phone call from a friend of mine asking about how to do a similar leveling like this to a different printer, but he's got the BL Touch, and it's showing four millimeters off from one side to the other, and that's ridiculous, and I agree. The issue is here is unlike other brands like a Prusa or something, they're not uh, giving you another way to level this uh, or, or like for instance with the Prusa what it'll do is it'll raise up to the top and jam itself at the top and then through the resistance of the motors trying to push it through the top of the printer it says okay resistance 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 this is done or like you know we've hit home and then it'll go down and then it has a sensor that then double checks the bed so with this one the issue is is essentially you know let's say it's perfectly level right now you just bump one side and then oh no you know look you see how that's i don't know if you can tell in the video but it's going to be really hard it seems to get this just perfect without like for instance this was delivered in an uber I'm not sure how I'm going to get this perfectly level print it print and then have it travel through an Uber back to the client and then him pull it out and it be ready to go. Now what we might be looking for potentially is to make sure that our mounting brackets are mounted perfect because with Enders and with some of the other ones if they're not mounted just exactly perfect it can skew it a little bit. One of the things we want to check is are all the wheels tight and I can tell you right now those are not that's not um, over here is not so the first thing we need to do is adjust our concentric nuts once the concentric nuts are adjusted we should be able to pull in and tighten that will help hold the level because right now it's really easy for it to go up and down you do want some resistance with these wheels up against it especially like since this can be moved um, we don't want that Let's look here. Everything else otherwise is looking tight. Um, yeah. See, and this is when I talk about. Hey! When I talk about uh, these wheels and why I don't like the wheels, this is one of the reasons why you can see. Here, you want to look at this building? Look, look at the wear on these wheels. That's one of the reasons that I don't like them is occasionally they just all do that. <laughs> Fell apart? Um, yeah, they slowly start falling apart. Um, now with that, this is still tight, so the concentric nuts here may or may not have those are okay. Um, you know, my first answer to this problem was replace it with steel wheels, but then steel on aluminum. Aluminum powder coated, it will wear away the powder coating and uh, start ruining the rail. So steel wheels are not a good replacement for rubber, uh, in my opinion, after experimenting with that. Um, let's see. The only other thing is this is going to be hard to video 
with one hand slash two hands and then also work on this thing. Um, but the first thing we'll do at least is adjust the concentric nut. So here you grab one of these, just about every printer should have come with it. And we're just going to tighten this to the point that all the wheels are nice and stiff. Um, and then same on this one, this side. And it doesn't need too much. Now a concentric nut is essentially just a nut with an offset hole. So that means that there is no fully tight. There is only closer to the rail and further away from the rail. And eventually you're going to be as close as you can get to the rail and eventually you're going to be too far away. So that's pretty tight now. Now from the looks of it, it looks like... I mean, let's just... Yeah, I'm going to need both hands. I can't... Let's see. Hmm. Yeah, I'm really questioning what's going on here and how I need to go about it. So I think I'm going to pause this for a second. I'm going to do some investigating with both hands and a closer eye, and then I will uh, unpause it and address it shortly after. Okay, so this video is continuing now two days later because I didn't have time to continue working on it when I was last working on this, but we have taken the X gantry apart and I believe this is where most of the problem lies when it comes to uh, getting a proper X slash Z level on really any of your enders, this artillery signed water and everything, but look, you see how much that rotates? That's a considerable amount. This one, quite a bit less. So that's probably not our problem, but this is. Because if that's put in wrong, it's not gonna, it's not gonna go in. And one of the downsides is, is this is right where that rod goes. So you can't like put it in and install it and then tighten this down. You've gotta nail it correct the first time. And see, at least on like the enders and whatnot, they have like a straight line that kind of matches with here, and that's actually how you can do it. So I generally just align this to that, and then it works. In this case, I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do this. I mean, what, like maybe just get a feel for the center of it? Like, I mean, that's quite literally the problem. Like, this is... When you're talking about stuff that needs to be sub one millimeter accurate, you know, that's three, four millimeters. And that will make a difference. That will bend this bar up because when I did get the bar level, I could feel there was a bind. And that's the, that's the issue there is that bind. So I guess what I'm going to do here is probably set it the best way I can, put it on, feel it. If I have to, take it back off, put it back on. So we're going to go back and forth with that till I get it just right, and I'll let you know what happens here shortly. All right, so what I wound up doing is just kind of... Actually, I, I pushed the metal bracket all the way down as much as I could because it would at least be even by pushing down like that. Locked that in place, and then... I did the same thing on this one, but I still had some uh, some variation issues. Um, so I loosened this one because this one can actually be loosened where that one can't. That one has the bolts behind the uh, the the Z ex aluminum extrusion. Um, so I loosened those, reset it. That seemed like it did help a little bit. Then I wound up literally just cranking up on this side because it still felt like it was yank yanked down a little bit like this. So I literally just over yanked it that away and went back level with it. Um, the other presenting issue I, wa I was having was there's not enough resistance so that when the motors aren't engaged, they don't just do this and, and release. So how I fixed that was just over tightening the concentric nuts on the backside. So the con the, those wheels now are really pinching the z-axis and that's giving enough resistance that it shouldn't um, that it's not gonna release when uh, when the motor is disengaged
So. Now. Uh, adjusting the Z offset. Sorry. Um, Alright, what else now? Seal touch. The offset. What does the VL touch do? That's just testing. And probe test fade height load settings. I think we're gonna do store settings now. So alright, I think we're ready for a test mic, so I'll go load something up and we'll see if this thing works. Alright, so it looks like we've got this leveled. It is doing a nice big level test. Again, the presenting problem uh, when this printer came in for repair was that uh, it was not level and you needed to do some large prints and was having troubling leveling. Um, it did just kick up a little bit over there, but that was that was from before, so I just adjusted that back corner up just a smidgen. But otherwise, this is looking pretty mint. So I think we have completed the artillery sidewinder repair slash leveling. And um, just as a reminder, I didn't watch any videos to do this. Um, to me, this is just kind of like a general knowledge to figure out um, how to level all these printers. Um, this one being tricky and that it did not have an end stop on either side. So you got to get this gantry level first. Then you have to make sure that the bed is level. And then once you have that, you can do the bed level with the BL touch and um, get it to this point. Um, just as a reminder to recap, we had to re-bolt the x-axis down, adjust the concentric nuts to where they're holding a lot of tension, and then I compressed this to the point to where it looked um, level and was level, and same with that. Then I ran the nozzle, I ran the nozzle from point to point to point um, to make sure that that all looked even and perfect, and then once that did, um, we went ahead and started a print. I adjusted the Z offset height. Everything's looking good. We could potentially save the EEPROM set. I did save the EEPROM settings, but um, we might do one more level since I did just a slight adjustment. This one looked a little tight. That one looked a little bit far away. So I adjusted those two. Otherwise, this is looking perfect and it's definitely better than what it was for the client. There's probably some other print settings that could otherwise be improved just on this print but um, no I think it's looking good and we won't have any problems so um, yeah that's how you end up leveling or at least how I leveled this uh, artillery sidewinder and um, it is ready to go back to the client now so have a good day guys hopefully you learned something interesting about uh, about this one